Hi guys, welcome to Fema e Academy. In this video, we are going to learn about Kelvin double bridge. In Kelvin bridge, we have seen that we have to consider the resistance of the yoke or the connectors while considering the balance equation of a bridge. And if you are able to connect uh, the yoke to a point P suitably, then we are able to reduce the effect of yoke. So here in this Kelvin double bridge, a second set of arm. Normally in any bridge you can see only four arms, but here two extra arms are added. That is with resistor resistance K and B, so that we are able to connect to a particular point P, so that we can completely avoid the effect of the yoke resistance R Y. That is why the term double is used. Another set of arms are present. That is why this is known as Kelvin double bridge. The second set of arm labeled as A and B in the diagram is connect the galvanometer to the point P and it will maintain an appropriate potential between M and N. So this can eliminate the effect of the yoke resistance R Y as I said. So for the balance of this bridge we have to maintain a condition that A by B should be equal to R1 by R2. So this condition to be maintained for the balance equation of Kelvin bridge. The galvanometer indication will be zero when the potential between K and uh, P are equal. So that there will not be any current flow through this galvanometer it will be balanced. In that case we can see that the potential between the point KL and the potential LMP will be equal. So in this analysis we are going to show that EKL is equal to E. LMP. By equating these two equations, we can find out the balance equation of the bridge. So from this diagram, we can uh, see that uh, we can find out the value of I1. What is I1? I1 is the current flowing through the path LKO. You can see that. Since there is no current flow through the galvanometer, the current will be flowing through the path LKO. So that is nothing but the potential difference between these two points, the first point and the second point is E, that is nothing but the potential provided for the bridge E divided by the resistance in that path, that is R1 plus R2. So let us call this as equation number 1. Now we have to find out EKL. So we have found out the current I1. So what will be EKL? What will be EKL? EKL will be I1 into R2. So that is equal to E into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is a potential divider rule. So this is the equation number 2. We can also see that E is equal to, if you are taking the bottom network, we can also write E is equal to I2. That is the current flow into the bottom network. I2 into the total resistance. The total resistance in that path is uh, nothing but R3 plus Rx. These are the series resistors. And the combination of A, B and R, Y. So that will be is equal to A plus B into R, Y divided by A plus B plus R, Y. So let us call this as equation number 3. And if you substitute the E from equation number 3 to equation number 2, you can get an equation for EKL. So EKL is nothing but I2 R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into R3 plus Rx plus A plus B into Ry divided by A plus B plus R1. Let us call this as equation number 4. Okay, now we are going to uh, find out ELMP. ELMP. So that we can equate ELMP and EKL. So ELMP is the potential uh, in the part ELMP I have shown here. We can divide it into two parts that is ELM plus EMP. So from the figure we can see that ELM is equal to I2 into R3. EMP is equal to uh, the total current I2 into B, the opposite amp into Ry divided by A plus B plus Ry total resistance in the path. So if you are adding LMP and MP we can get ELMP that is ELMP is equal to let us take I2 common I2 into R3 plus B Ry divided by A plus B plus Ry. So we have an equation for EKL 
and now we have another equation for E L M P. Let us call this is equation number five, and let us try to equate the equations L M that is E K L and E K L M P because the potential between K and P are equal. That is why the galvanometer is not conducting and it is showing the zero, and that is the bridge is balanced condition. So while we equate, we can write an equation like I R two. I2 R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into R3 plus Rx plus A plus B into Ry divided by A plus B plus Ry is equal to I into I2 into R3 plus B Ry divided by A plus B plus Ry. So we can rearrange the equation and cross multiply. So I am leaving the arithmetic behind this equation to you. If you want to see the step by step procedure, I have given a PDF in the description box of this video. There you can see the step by step analysis of this equation. So if you are analyzing this equation and solving it, we can get an equation for R x that is equal to R one R three divided by R two plus B R y by A plus B plus R y into R one by R two minus A by B. So you can get an equation like this. So let us call this equation as equation number six. So in the beginning, we have an assumption that A by B is equal to R one by R two. So that is the condition required for the balance of the bridge. So if you apply that condition here, you can see that there is a term R one by R two minus A by B. So if the ratios are equal. We know that this term will be equal to zero, and the whole term will be equal to zero. So the remaining equation will be like this: R x is equal to R one R three by R two. So what this equation says? This equation says that the unknown resistance is given by the ratio of R one R three and R two. This is the usual working equation for the Kelvin. Uh, bridge or Wilson bridge. This indicates that the resistance of the yoke, that is, the resistance of the yoke was R Y, does not have any effect on the measurement of the resistance if R1 by R2 is equal to A by B. If we are able to maintain this ratio, R1 by R2 is equal to A by B, we can see that the the unknown resistance equation is given by R1 into R2 divided by R2, and there is no R Y term. That is. The yoke resistance don't have any effect on them, so we can conclude that if we if we can connect two extra arms A and B, and if we are maintaining the ratio A by B is equal to R1 by R2, we can avoid the effect of R Y, that is the yoke resistance in the Kelvin double bridge, and we can get most accurate results from this Kelvin double bridge. So the main application of Kelvin double bridge is to measure the low Resistance values, low resistance values. So below one ohm, even for a small wire, we can find out the resistance using the Kelvin double bridge. So this is known as double bridge because there is two extra arms in the bridge. So this is to avoid the yoke resistance or connector resistance. So connectors normally we need to connect uh, the resistors using some wires. So these connecting wires don't have any effect in this Kelvin double bridge, so that we can get very accurate result. From the Kelvin W, the unknown resistance value can be very small resistance value. Then also we can measure using the Kelvin W. Thank you for watching.